when you talk about the data warehouse, when you talk about the data warehouse, you know, before understanding what exactly is the data warehouse, we'll try to understand two terminologies called as what is a ONTP system and what is a OLAP system. So these are the two technologies which are very important before understanding what is a data warehouse. So what is a ONTP system and what is a OLAP system. Okay. So when you talk about this ONTP system, so ONTP systems are nothing but online transactional processing processing system. Online transactional processing system. Okay. So OTP full, full form is online transactional processing system where all the transactions will be processed here. So when I say a transaction, let's say uh, you have many uh, OLTP systems that you will see in your uh, daily life. So for example, if you go for any railway application, when you wanted to book a ticket, you go for the railway application. When you wanted to book a plane ticket, you go for the alien application. When you wanted to perform the uh, banking transaction, you use the banking application. So when you wanted to table the amount, you use a ATM withdrawal center, ATM withdrawal center application. Right? So when you wanted to book any products in the online, you use the e-commerce application. So when I say e-commerce application, you have like a, a Amazon is a is Amazon. You have a Flipkart. So we have a, a, a you have like a eBay. So these are all the different. Uh, uh, different applications uh, uh, which are the which are the examples of the OLTP system. So we, we are going to use this uh, in our daily life. Let's say if you wanted to whenever you wanted to book any ticket, yes, you go to the railway application, you log in with your username and the password, you are going to book the ticket. So whenever you are booking the ticket, it's nothing but a transaction. So when you wanted to uh, book a alien ticket, you go to the respective site or or whether it's a GoAVO or it is Atrogeny uh, or it is uh, uh, Make Your Trip. So you go into the uh, airline application site and you book a ticket in there. So whenever you book a ticket, it's something about a transaction. So when you wanted to perform the core banking with transactions, let's say you are debiting the amount or you are taking the amount. So that's, that is nothing but right? So either it is uh, from the banking system or it is from the ATM system. So you, when you debit a when you debit from your account or when you credit into your account, that is nothing but a transaction. So whenever you are booking a product in the e-commerce site, that is nothing but a transaction. So transaction, when I say transaction, it's a technical term, right? So transaction is nothing but it's a set of DML operations. It's a set of DML operations. Means when I say a set of DML operations, either we insert the data, is or we update the data or we delete the data from the OLTP system. Yes, so this is nothing but a transaction. So whenever you are performing any transaction within the OLTP system, you are nothing but you are adding the data to the OLTP system. So when you when you made a transaction, it's nothing but you are adding the data. So this OLTP system, as I told you, these are uh, these has a 24 by 7 uh, access to the yes. 24 to 7 access will be there. So we have a predefined access path, yes, and the large volumes of uh, transactions it will take. Large volumes of uh, transactions. Large volumes of uh, uh, large number of users will uh, use this. Right? So due to that, large volumes of data will be, I mean, large volumes of transactions will be carried out. So these are the the systems. Okay, so we have to perform the business analysis. So the main agenda of storing the data is for the business analysis. Business analysis. So if we have to analyze this uh, uh, OLTP system for the business analysis, okay, will this be useful or not? We have to understand. Will this be useful or not? So let's say uh, I have an OLTP system so that I have a set of OLTP systems so that I have, uh, let's say, I'm taking the banking system. I have a state bank of India as my bank system. So state bank of India is my banking system. 
I hope everyone will know what is the statement of India. It's a bank uh, that we have, so where we have different uh, OLTP systems. Are there. So as I told you, OLTP systems are the backbone of any enterprise. Whenever you are setting up uh, any enterprise, you basically look for the first part uh, which is the OLTP system because it carries out all the bank, uh, it carries out all the transactions of the company. It carries out all the transactions of the company. Let's say I have an OLTP system which is on SAP which carries out all the core banking transactions. So when I say core banking transactions, uh, uh, it's like uh, whenever you are performing any crediting or debiting level, so that is nothing but a core banking transaction. All those transactions, let's say, that is recorded in the SAP system. I have uh, some credit card uh, transactions also performed. Uh, so where uh, uh, it is uh, presented on uh, main friends, main friends system. So this is another uh, uh, technology where all the data is present. And I have another system called as an insurance system. Insurance system where the data is present in the Arthur database. Where all the transactions are carried out in the Arthur database. So the three different OLTP systems are there. Right? So three different OLTP systems are there where uh, uh, the data is, where all the operational transactions are recorded. So when you talk about this OLTP system, so basically in order to perform the business analysis, in order to perform the business analysis, uh, we have some challenges uh, uh, that, are, that I have to face here because uh, OLTP systems basically contains the current data. It contains the current data. When I say current data, it is like, uh, let's say if you go for any ATM or withdrawal center, right? uh, if you take the many statements of your account, it hardly gives you the last two, five to ten transactions. So if we have performed all the ten transactions, let's say if we have debited all ten times today, so it is going to give you only today's transactions. Because OLTP system is a, I mean, ADM virtual center is a typical example of OLTP systems. Because if you have performed all the ten transactions today itself, it is able to show only the today's transactions. It will not show you the last week transaction or the last week transactions. So since our agenda is to perform the business analysis, in order to perform the effective business analysis, uh, basically you need the historical data. Historical data in the sense, you can uh, compare your business quarterly, means this quarter to last quarter, or you can compare your business with uh, this month to last month, or you can compare your business with uh, this year to last year. So when you want to compare your business with the different time zones or different time frames, you need to have a historical data. You need to have a historical data. Okay. So but OLTP systems that contains our current data is present here. And uh, we have the data present in the different technologies. Yes. We have the data present in the different technologies. And we have the data present in the different standards. Because each OLTP system may follow different standards. No integrated data is present. No integrated data is present. Right? And uh, so because of all these reasons, because of all these disadvantages that we have, we are not able to perform the effective analysis on top of the OLTP system. Okay? So these are the disadvantages. With respect to the OLTP system. So, these are all the disadvantages. So, because of all these disadvantages, we are not able to perform the business analysis effectively. So, what I am going to do here? So, what I will do is that I will create a homogeneous database. I am going to create a homogeneous database. I will get the transactions from each OLTP system. I will get the transactions of each OLTP system. I'll transform all the transactions and I'll load it into the very big database which is called as a data warehouse. Which is called as a data warehouse. So what is a data warehouse now? So the data warehouse is nothing but it's a database. A data warehouse is nothing but a database where it contains large volumes of data. Where it contains large volumes of data. And we have the data in a single uh, system. Yes, centralized view of data is present. And the large volumes of data is installed. And it shows the uh, 
uh, historical data. Historical data will store. And you have the singular format or single standard of uh, single standard of data is with them. And you have the data integrated from multiple systems. You have the data integrated from multiple systems. Okay. You can see here, so basically, you are going to perform the EDL process here. So when I say EDL process, so the data that is present in the multiple oil treatment systems is extracted. The data that is present in the multiple oil treatment systems uh, is extracted. It is transformed into a homogeneous format because you have multiple formats present in the oil treatment system. It is transformed into the homogeneous format and it is loaded into the data warehouse. So this process of data extraction, data transformation, and data loading is called as the EDM process. It is called as the EDM process. So where we are going to load this data, we are going to load the data in the data warehouse. So the data warehouse is nothing but a database. It is nothing but a database where it stores the historical data. Where it stores the historical data. Means when I say historical data, let's say if we have limited this data warehouse from 2010, it will contain 2010 data, 11 data, 12 data, 13 data, 14 data, 15 data. Up to September, uh, uh, up to September 18, we have the data present in this data warehouse. So that reason, which historical data, it contains the historical data. So when you have the historical data. Basically, you can compare the business with the different time periods. Means uh, you can compare uh, today's business with yesterday's business, this month with the uh, last month, this year with the last year, this quarter with the last quarter. So you can compare your business with different time periods whenever you have the historical data. So whenever you walk in into any, uh, I mean, when you, whenever you walk in into a project, any data warehousing project, uh, as I told you, the data warehouse will be on the uh, database. A data warehouse is nothing but a database. Your data warehouse could be on it could be on Oracle. Yes, it could be on Teradata. It could be on uh, SQL Server. It could be on uh, Sybase. It could be on DB. So whenever you walk in into the project, so your data warehouse could be on any of the databases here. Any of the databases present here. Okay, so as I told you, a data warehouse is nothing but a database. It's nothing but a database which contains a large volumes of data that will be helpful for you to perform the business analysis. It is used to perform the business analysis. Okay, so uh, uh, we have an ETL developer. Our role is an ETL developer. As an ETL developer, you are going to create this ETL process in order to load the data into this data warehouse. So, as an ETL developer, your role is nothing but ETL developer, right? Or an informatica developer. What you do is that you will extract the data, you will create an ETL process that will extract the data from the OVL TV system and it will load the data into the tables of the data warehouse. Okay? So as an ETL developer, you are going to create this ETL process. So where do you create this ETL process inside the ETL tools? So we have the ETL tools here. You have some of the ETL tools uh, that we have in the market. Like you have uh, most probably Informatica Power Center. Informatica Power Center is the ETL tool. You have a uh, data stage, so which is from IBM. So this is from IBM. Informatica Power Center is from the Informatica Corporation. Informatica Corporation. And you have uh, uh, other ETL tools called as SSIS. You might be knowing that SSIS, which is from Microsoft. Uh, there is an ETL tool called as Agrisho, so which is from Agrisho Corporation. Uh, you have uh, SAP Data Services, which is from SAP. So likewise, uh, you have Oracle Data Integrator, which is from Oracle Corporation. Oracle Corporation. So we have multiple uh, ETL tools are there. Uh, in the same way, we have some uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, free ETL tools also uh, present. Open source ETL tools also present. So which will uh, 
which will be useful for us in order to clear the ETA process. So as an informatica developer, you will make use of this informatica power center in order to clear the ETL process. When I say ETL process, you extract the information from one of the tables, from one of the tables in the in the source system and you load the data into the tables of the data warehouse. So when I say tables of the data warehouse, basically as I told you, a data warehouse will be on top of the database. So in the inside the database, you have multiple number of tables where the data will be inserted. Okay. So as an ETA developer, using the Informatica Power Center, you will extract the information, transform the data, and you load the data into the data warehouse. So this data warehouse, yes, let's say if I'm the sales manager, if I'm the sales manager of the SPS so I wanted to analyze how the business is running. So if you have to analyze how the business is running, so the sales manager is not the technical person. So he is not the technical person in order to find the queries from this database and understand how the business is running. So he cannot do that. So for this purpose, what we have is that we have another layer, another business layer called as a reporting layer, reporting layer. Right? Or we can say it as the business intelligence layer. Business intelligence layer. So what do we do here is that we are going to create the R reports. We have some reports. When I say report, report is nothing but it is a, a representation of the data either in the bar graph, either in the tabular format, tabular format, or it could be in the pie chart. So right, we are going to represent the data. So in this in this different formats and these reports will be accessed by the R business users. These reports will be accessed by the business users in order to understand how the business is done. Right. So what does this uh, BA layer do is that we have some set of BA tools are there. BI tools, business intelligence tools. So these tools will query the data. They will query the data. When I say query, it's nothing but they will select the data from the data warehouse, they will select the data from the data warehouse or they will query the data from the data warehouse and they will create the report. So when I say report, a report is nothing but it's a representation of the data in different format in the most understandable format uh, uh, and then uh, they will prepare the data in the most understandable format and these reports will be sent to the business users of the company in order to understand the business. So there are, like how you have multiple ETL tools, multiple databases, so we have different uh, multiple uh, uh, BA tools also present. Right? So like uh, Cognos is a BA tool, which is from uh, IBM. So Cognos is from uh, IBM. So we have SAP Demo, which is from SAP. We have a micro strategy. We have ClickView. We have Tableau. So these are all the different uh, uh, BA tools that we have. So the BI developer, business intelligence developer, basically is responsible for creating these reports by by querying the data from the data warehouse. By querying the data from the data warehouse. Right? Okay. So when you whenever you query the data from the data warehouse, when you create the report on there, so these reports will be accessed by the business users of the company and they are going to understand how the business is done. So the data warehouse now it will facilitate the uh, it will facilitate the business users to make decisions of the business. Means uh, they are going to understand how the business is running. So what is the growth of the business? Are we getting loss? Are we getting profit? Right? How the uh, business is running in a particular uh, region? And what are the business uh, challenges that we have? So if we are getting the profit, we can go for the business expansion. If you are getting the loss, we can go for the what are different objectives uh, or different uh, we take different decisions in order to uh, in order to improve the business standards. Right. So we can understand what is a better product in the in the company. So what kind of promotions you can make in order to make it uh, uh, as a as a good product. So what are the bad products that we have? Where we can discuss that one. Right. 
So these are the different uh, uh, different uh, analytical decisions we can perform whenever we have the data warehouse. So the data warehouse will facilitate the data for the reporting. Based on the report, we can understand how the business is. So for every organization or any company, in order to perform the business analysis, we definitely need the data warehouse. So how do we acquire the data into the data warehouse by means of the ETL process? By using the ETL tools, we acquire the data into the data warehouse. Right? So any questions so far? Any questions? Yes, any questions? Uh, uh, Asma, Irfan, Ram, Ramnath, Surendra? Surendra. Uh, uh, in the diagram, when you say that data warehouse is stable, right? At the bottom, you mentioned Oracle, SQL, and all. So, these are all the databases, not the data warehouse, right? You mean? See, on top of the database, we create the data warehouse. So, when I say data warehouse, understand clearly, you know, this point is important. When I say data warehouse, data warehouse uh, is not a technology. It is not a technology, okay? It is a concept. It is a concept, okay? Or a mm -hmm. process that we have in order to analyze the business. It's not a technology. Many people think that data warehouse is a technology. It's not a, it's not a technology. It is just a concept that is built on top of the database. Okay, built on it. top of the database. Right? Yeah, basically fetching the data from multiple data bases and making it one warehouse is nothing but data warehouse. Correct. Correct. That will facilitate for the business analysis. That point. See, what I see when I say, when I ask you, uh, here you have a point called large volumes of data. Typically, a table can also store the large volumes of data. So you can store large amount of data within a table. But what is the difference between a table and the data warehouse is because is that a table cannot facilitate the business analysis properly, whereas the data warehouse uh, will facilitate the business analysis. So the main agenda of building the data warehouse is for the business analysis purpose. So we can analyze the business, how it is running, so what kind of strategical uh, decisions we can do, so what kind of uh, artificial intelligence uh, we can perform. Means, let's say on this uh, 2015, we have some 20%, uh, uh, we have a business, uh, uh, a business uh, gain of 20%. So we can even analyze on 2016 at the same time, we can have a 30% of the business gain. How you can do that? By using the, uh, we have some certain business intelligence tools also present, so which will uh, even work like an artificial intelligence. We can uh, expect the how the revenue growth will be there in the later years also. Okay, so all these kind of uh, decisions, all these kind of uh, analysis we can do only when we have the data warehouse. Right? Clear? Any questions? Asma, any questions? What about the license prices, price about the internet and the licensing procedure? Uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, uh, we'll talk about it. Uh. Sir, uh, one question. BI also yes. part of the ETL or B business intelligence is the another one? It's a another, uh, it's another layer. So, uh, so this is the okay. ETL. Uh, so we can say this is the ETL process. We call it as uh, okay. uh, DW, right? And uh, so this layer is called as a BA. So we have a separate uh, BA developers on there. If one is a BA developer, so we have a separate BA developers. Uh, uh, so uh, these uh, people job is to create the reports. Okay, create the reports so in order and understand okay. whether the data is valid or not. And based on that, they will create the reports. So these reports, they will send it to the business users. So the business users will understand how the business is running. They will analyze the business. Uh -huh. Okay. And okay. Uh, when, it, okay. uh, when it comes to the ETL process, so the ETL developer, we are the ETL developers. We make use of the ETL okay. tools, and uh, we get the data. We create the ETL process to get the data, to transform the data, and to load the data into the data warehouse. Okay. So we are the, we can say okay. we are the data warehouse developers of the ETLs. So together, DW plus BA is called as a DW BA. So it's a DW BA process. DW BA process.
Data warehouse business intelligence. Right? Yes. That's one thing I like to say that uh, right. this is the one of the powerful tool which is uh, uh, which is uh, which have more important in the market. I am using this uh, data warehouse in different uh, projects. Right. So we have this tool uh, used by the Fortune uh, 500 companies. Uh, most of the projects we have it on uh, informatical person. Why it is uh, so powerful is the principle to understand. Okay. In a short. Time. So we are, we have seen uh, all these uh, transactional services are there. So we perform the ETL process in order to load the data into the data warehouse. So from the data warehouse, we facilitate uh, uh, that data for the reporting purpose. Uh, so the business user uh, can even now uh, generate the reports uh, in order to understand how the business is running. So when we talk about the Informatica Power Center, Informatica Power Center is the standard uh, ETL tool and the powerful uh, data integration platform that we have in the current market. So the, this uh, Informatica Power Center is coming from the Informatica Corporation. So Informatica Corporation is a company that has released various products. So you can see, you have data quality, complex uh, event processing, master data management, B2B business uh, exchange, okay? application ILM, cloud data computing. So even with the uh, uh, Informatica Power Center, we can access the data from the cloud. We can access the data from the cloud as well as we can load the data into the cloud application also. So, and you can even, so wherever the data is present, uh, like it could be present on uh, any of the social networking sites like uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or uh, or Twitter. So we can use uh, uh, that version. We call it as a, uh, we call it as a power exchange, okay? We can use the power exchange concept with the power center in order to read the data from any kind of source system. So your source system could be anywhere. Your source system could be on any platform, whether it is uh, the uh, BM, uh, I mean, whether it is uh, like uh, uh, from the SAP or it is from the, uh, or it is uh, from the big data or it is from the flat file, any of the flat file or it is uh, from the Excel PDF or any note file, right? So wherever your data is the resist, so the Informatica Power Center has the capability of uh, getting the data as well as loading the data to any platform. So you can extract the data from any platform, whether it is present in the cloud or big data or any of the social networking applications or any databases or any ERP solutions. So if Informatica can get the data as well as it can load the data to the same applications. Okay. So these are all the different uh, products that we have uh, from the Informatica Power Center, I mean Informatica Corporation. And we'll try to understand about this when we share the Informatica Power Center concept. Okay. And why we have to use Informatica? So there are many other ETL tools that we have in the market. So out of that, why we have to use only Informatica is because so it's a robust tool that we have where you can use that uh, use that uh, in any of the any of the environments. So we can use it, we can use it in Windows environment as well as, well as we can use it in any of the frameworks that we have it uh, of the units. So it's a high performer, okay? And it's a proven technology later. And we have the continuous innovation that when I say continuous innovation, uh, there are many other products uh, that are playing a key role in the data you know, So those products are uh, released by the information corporation. And what are new technologies that comes into the market? Let's say you have the big data is a new platform that came into the market. Right? You can even access the data from the big data. So uh, so these are all the different uh, uh, functionalities that we have with the uh, Informatica Power Center, which led to the market leader in the current environment. Means, uh, so uh, as I told you, it is used by most of the companies uh, for uh, performing two kinds of products. So with Informatica Power Center, which is a data integration platform, we have two kinds of, uh, so we basically have two kinds of projects uh, where we can implement. One is a data warehousing project, so like how we have it here. So this is a data warehousing project. It means uh, we extract the information, transform the data, and load the data into the data warehouse. So this data warehouse will be useful for the business analysis. So this project is called as a data warehousing project. And we have another project called as a data integration project or data migration project. It means we have two systems of them. Let's say you have a billing system. So this billing system is present on the paper software. Okay, so this is the billing system, billing system, 
you have it on the people's of the people's of this uh, uh, ERP solution value and uh, you want to migrate this system into SAP you will have a new SAP system where you wanted to implement this billing system so you have to move the data right so for moving the data from this system to another system is called as a data migration project where you can even implement our Informatica Power Center. So the Informatica Power Center is used in the data migration project as well as it is used in the data warehousing project. So because of this importance, so it is used in uh, most of the companies. So we have uh, uh, two kinds of advantages with it, right? So where you can use it in data warehousing project and with uh, data migration project. So we have multiple uses uh, with this uh, Power Center. And because of this reason, you have multiple bookings of there and more number of projects also implemented on top of this. Okay. So when you talk about the prerequisite of uh, Power Center, so we have, uh, uh, we need a uh, good knowledge of the SQL commands on the SQL, and you need a good knowledge of uh, procedural language also. So as I told you, uh, so we have the data warehouse present on top of the database. Right? It is created on top of the database. So in order to communicate with this database, what language do you use? You use the SQL language, correct? Right? You use the SQL language for, uh, for interacting with this. For interacting with this, we use the SQL language, right? For this purpose, so the uh, learning the field, uh, SQL language, right? Understanding the SQL commands is a prerequisite uh, uh, for learning this, for learning this course, okay? And most of the time you have uh, this uh, data warehouse or, uh, or this project so will be on the Unix uh, environment. So you, for that purpose, you need a good knowledge of the Unix commands and the Unix scripting. Okay. So as a part of this training, we are going to give you ample amount of uh, knowledge uh, with the, on, on, on the data warehouse. We are going to give you ample amount of knowledge on the Informatica Power Center concept and even on the Unix concepts. Okay. So we have a separate Unix session instead. You will uh, give you a uh, heads up on uh, how the Unix commands are used and in what scenarios the Unix scripting will be used. We are going to cover that course. Right? So these are the prerequisites. And when it comes to the course, uh, we have three modules. We have divided into three modules. So in the first part, um, for the first four days, we'll understand all these data warehousing concepts. Right? So what are the advantages, uh, what are the different architectures, what are the di uh, different uh, OLAP tools are there, different uh, modeling tools, all these things we'll understand in the first, uh, uh, in the first, uh, uh, in the first of our classes. After that, we'll try to understand about the event related uh, activities, okay? So these are all the event related activities uh, or the concept uh, we'll understand for the five days. And uh, we'll understand even uh, the developer related costs also for the next 20 days. Okay, so it's a, uh, it's all together a 30, uh, a 30 days program or 30 days, uh, 30 classes uh, program we have. So where when you attend this course, you can apply for even the administrator uh, job also. Okay, you can apply for informatica developer as well as informatica power center administrator. So the classes uh, will be like a 30 days classes you have. 30 classes you have, and the duration is uh, 1 hour uh, 15 minutes. So uh, when it comes to the software, so 9.5.1 is the latest software that you have. So the big classes is going to give you the real way. We will have uh, Informatica 9.1, 10G within the Windows environment. So you need not worry on the how the software will be installed on your system. So the big classes will take care of it. Okay. So these are all the different materials uh, which you are going to provide. So sales uh, case study. So we are going to understand this power center tool with the project. Okay, with the mini project we are going to understand. We have uh, uh, different materials that will be shared with you. Data warehouse material, SQL material, informatical material, lab reports, yes, assignments, uh, Unix material, interview scenarios, interview technical questions, and I'm going to help you even with the analysis for questions also. Okay, so these are all the things uh, which you are going to cover as a part of the training. 